the trait approach to personality is one of the most widely used and accepted models in psychology. This approach argues that personality is made up of stable and enduring characteristics, also known as traits. It suggests that people differ from one another in terms of these traits, which in turn shapes their behavior and responses to different situations. Hi guys, welcome back to this channel. I'm Akanksha from Psychologic and today's topic is the trait approach to personality. So let's get into it. One of the leading figures of the trait approach was Gordon Allport, who proposed the trait theory of personality. According to Allport, traits are psychological structures that exist within the individual and are responsible for that individual's behavior. He categorized traits into three types, cardinal traits, central traits, and secondary traits. Cardinal traits are the most dominant and represent the overarching personality of an individual. While central traits are those key traits that define a person's behavior in specific situations. Secondary traits on the other hand are less important and often only surface in certain circumstances. Another prominent figure in the trait approach was Raymond Cattell, who advanced the idea of personality factors. He used factor analysis to determine the underlying dimensions of personality, resulting in the identification of 16 source and surface traits, including warmth, assertiveness, and anxiety, that he believed were fundamental to all human behavior. The source traits are stable and are considered the building blocks of personality. Besides these, there are also a number of surface traits that result out of the interaction of source traits. Cattell described the source traits in terms of opposing tendencies. He claimed that these factors represented the building blocks of personality and that they could be used to describe a person's behavior across various situations and circumstances. He developed a test called the 16 Personality Factor Questionnaire or 16PF for the assessment of personality. This test is widely used by psychologists. Hans Eysenck also contributed to the trait approach with his own theory of personality in which he proposed three primary dimensions. Number one, neuroticism versus emotional stability. This refers to the degree to which people have control over their feelings. At one extreme of the dimension, we find people who are neurotic. They are anxious, moody, touchy, restless, and quickly lose control. At the other extreme lie people who are calm, even-tempered, reliable, and remain under control. Number two, extroversion versus introversion. This refers to the degree to which people are socially outgoing or socially withdrawn. At one extreme are those people who are active, gregarious, impulsive, and thrill-seeking. At the other extreme are people who are passive, quiet, cautious, and reserved. Number three, psychoticism versus sociability. It is considered that this dimension interacts with the other dimensions mentioned. A person who scores high on the psychoticism dimension tends to be hostile, egocentric, and antisocial. In contrast, people who are low in psychoticism are more likely to be emotionally stable and empathetic and have the ability to build healthy relationships. Icing Personality Questionnaire is the test used to study these dimensions of personality. According to Icing, each of these dimensions is based on underlying biological and genetic factors 
and they influence a person's behavior in numerous ways. In 1991, psychologist John Oldham proposed the Big Five Personality Theory. The five personality traits are commonly referred to as Ocean, where O stands for openness to experience, C for conscientiousness, E for extraversion, A for agreeableness, and N for neuroticism. This theory was well supported by empirical evidence and is therefore becoming one of the most well-known and widely accepted theories of personality. While there are many variations to the trait approach, the insight provided by Allport, Cattell, Isenck and Oldham laid the foundation for more evidence-based and objective ways of understanding personality. Today, the trait approach is still widely used and continues to make significant contributions to personality psychology. So that's it for this video. If you're looking for quality mental health resources, please check out my Etsy shop. The link is provided in the description below. If you enjoyed watching this video, please like it and subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon so you're notified when the next video comes out. Thanks for watching.